Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Gallagher, and I'm here to talk to you today about roadmap management in a B2B context. Specifically, I want to talk about uh, how to handle and balance um, you know, uh, specific and very boutique customer requests coming in from your large and premium customers and balancing that with your you know, set out product management and the product vision that you had uh, that you think will impact the largest number of users and largest number of customers. Uh, and I think this is a, a pretty common problem in the B2B environment. Uh, so we can discuss this a little bit. Uh, before I start, I'll uh, give you a brief introduction to myself. Like I said, my name is Chris. I am currently a product manager at Zoom. And I will caveat this, that uh, the opinions I express here are mine and mine alone. And they do not reflect um, the, the opinions of my current or previous employers. Um, additionally, my LinkedIn profile is at the bottom. If feel free to reach out and connect and continue this conversation further. Uh, want to start with a brief overview. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, first, I want to go into what the problem I'm discussing is, trying to lay out uh, maybe an example of that. So um, you sort of have an understanding of what this problem is. Hopefully it resonates with you. Um, <clears throat> next, I want to discuss an approach and some tactics that I've used uh, in order to help with this problem. Um, you can see them there, uh, but definitely this is, I think, you know, uh, I want to discuss some very specific tactics, maybe a little bit more of a tactical discussion uh, in a B2B environment. Um, you know, a lot of things we'll discuss will assume that a lot of the other product management work has been done. You know, for example, building a roadmap, doing the customer discovery, things of that nature. Um, so this is definitely a very um, focused discussion, uh, but hopefully a useful one. Uh, and hopefully this can bring some tactics to your tool belt uh, in order to help you influence your customers and your organization, um, you know, to provide at the end of the day a better product uh, to the entire, you know, to all of your stakeholders. First, I want to get a little into the problem statement. So this is something that I've experienced very often as a B2B product manager and talking to my peers, uh, they have also experienced. Um, so to give you sort of a, the narrative of the problem, um, typically, you know, as a product manager, you spend a lot of time developing and building your roadmap through cost, talking to customers, talking to end users to see where their pain points are going through a bunch of cycles with data science to understand how people are using their product, what opportunities are, looking at market research, um, and going through this process to refine and groom a well-defined roadmap. Um, and again, not going to go into detail onto you know, the, the mechanisms to do that. Uh, however, I'm going to go through and assume that you know, you've done a great job of building your roadmap and you're very confident that this roadmap is going to deliver the maximum value to your customer base. Um, and oftentimes after you've done this or in the process of doing this, you get a very large customer and particularly in the B2B context, um, you'll have a large customer who comes in, who's very important, has a lot of weight within the organization. And they'll come in with a very boutique request um, that isn't small or trivial, but actually takes a lot of resources. Uh, and so, you know, maybe you try and push back on this, but at the end of the day, you have to end up doing this large or this, you know, very specific request that really only impacts that one customer. And then, you know, that takes a lot of resources away from your roadmap. Um, once you have this reduction in resources, you try and reconfigure roadmap and, you know, still provide the maximum value with the resources you have left and, you know, the, the capacity you have left. Uh, and just once you do that, just in time for another escalation to happen from a different comp with a customer with a very, you know, another very specific request. And so these, this cycle tends to come through. Uh, and if it's not managed well, it can really, you know, destroy what your roadmap was. And at the end of the day, you look back and say, like, like hey, I didn't accomplish any of the goals that I planned to at the beginning of the quarter or the beginning of the year. And, um, you know, you spend most of your resources doing a very one-off thing for these large customers, which is great because you're addressing these needs of these large customers, uh, but those engineering resources and design resources are not going towards problems that are very scalable and address your entire user base. Uh, so one, I think, you know, it's important to 
discuss why this happens because uh, I think it, it, it is something that does happen uh, fairly often, especially in the B two B context. And um, you know, I, I think it's important not to just shrug it away as um, sort of something that you shouldn't be concerned about or something that's just sort of a an artifact of you know your organization. Uh, but there there is a reason why these you know these this problem occurs. Uh, I think you really need to understand that to be able to manage it. So, you know, <clears throat> what I have there in the first bullet, I think is really important is that the best product doesn't always win and that distribution really matters. And in the context of a B2B environment, a lot of times distribution is a salesperson and going and pitching this to, and really a sales team, an account team, uh, building a relationship with a customer and selling them on the solution and selling them not only on the, the product, but on the organization. And, you know, really a lot of what they're selling is that relationship and really to distribute your product, you need to have people who have direct relations with these customers. Because when a customer is going to spend millions of dollars, they really want to make sure that they're going to be taken care of. They're spending a lot of money with a vendor and they want to make sure that they feel comfortable that they're going to be taken care of and treated like someone who has you know, is spending that amount of money. Um, and additionally, when it comes to these requests, you know, if you're in a B2C environment where you're dealing with a consumer product like a, a Facebook uh, or an, an Amazon and they, an Amazon e-commerce, if you lose one user, there's one user who, or one customer uh, that doesn't like your product and you don't have a feature that meets the need of that one person, then they leave, but it's really not a big impact on your overall business. But in the B2B context, if you have one customer leave, um, <clears throat> that really has an outside an impact because they could bring with them. It's one customer, but it's millions of users and, or maybe thousands of users, millions of dollars. And so, um, you know, this, this really comes down to being able to get your product in the hands of these enterprise users. You, um, you do make sure that you're maintaining that relationship and take care, take care of your lines, take taking care of your lines of distribution in addition to building the best product. Um, and I think the second bullet here is really important is that I think oftentimes this is neglected as, you know, not part of my job as a product manager. Uh, and, you know, it, you think it should be more on the account team, uh, but I definitely want to highlight that influence is a key PM skill uh, and this is part of the job. I think people, if you don't treat it as part of the job, um, then you know, it will really come back to bite you. And But if you really look at it as, hey, this is investment in my job, uh, maintaining those relationships with both internal uh, and external stakeholders, including our customers, is really how I can influence the people, my stakeholders, in order to steer the organization, including the customers, in a direction that I think is best for the uh, you know, the overall ecosystem. So hopefully that gives you some context of, you know, while this is a very tactical discussion, uh, I think is really a key skill, especially in the, in the B2B environment and a subset of that influencing skill that is, you know, often talked about. Uh, but I think often we don't are given very concrete tools on how to approach this. So hopefully this gives you a, a concrete tool to solve a concrete problem in a B2B environment. So after discussing the problem, and, and I want to reiterate it here again, uh, and some assumptions I have when discussing this solution, um, you know, I, I'm assuming that this the the feature that comes in that is being requested by this large customer is very specific and unique to them. Um, you know, if this is something that is not very specific and pretty broad, and it's the this customer is really feeling this pain point enough to escalate it to you, then maybe you need to relook at your roadmap. Uh, you know, that, that is definitely something you need to validate that, hey, you know, I don't think this is important, but this customer is really, you know, making a fuss about this. So is that assumption actually correct? You need to go back, validate, see if this is actually just a one-off request, or is this something that's going to be held broadly by the rest of your customers? And maybe you need to refactor a roadmap based on that, you know, always being in tune to updating customer, you know, demands and market changing, you may need to update your roadmap. Um, and additionally, you know, I think this is assuming that you, you have that, that roadmap sort of extension to that last thought. This is assuming that you have a good roadmap in place 
and that, you know, the, the things that you're working on are going to, are maximizing the benefit of, you know, your users and your customers. And you've gone through that due diligence. You've gone through the due diligence of processing this request and understanding that it is truly a very small subset and not worth the resources at this time. So <clears throat> making those assumptions, um, here's a t- something that I found that uh, sort of some tactics that I found to, um, you know, work with the the customer and the account team to make sure that, you know, this, that you, either, you know, you say that you handle this request appropriately. The first thing is ensuring that they know their voice matters. I think, you know, um, but, and I'll go into each of these in detail, so I won't uh, linger on them here. The second one is showcasing your vision, um, you know, presenting that compelling roadmap that you had and really getting them bought in on it. And the last one is understanding the the context that your customer is in and the context that uh, your company is in, uh, because this is often uh, dependent on your, you know, your, the actions you decide to take is really, you know, what is the relationship with your customer and where is your company at? So diving into a little bit more into the first bullet, ensuring that the customer knows their voice matters. Um, so again, I think this is uh, something that I think uh, definitely falls into the realm of uh, the product manager's job and being an you know an influencer within your organization of um, <clears throat> as a product manager I, that I think sometimes um, people tend to want to delegate to the customer team. Then you can definitely like you need to find a way where you can do this at scale. But um, you know I definitely think it is part of your job to talk to the customer and um, be part of that you know, relationship that, that they feel they have with your company. Um, so part of that's providing them the experience that you would expect if you spent a lot of money because you're the person who, you know, holds the keys to the roadmap. Um, you know, it, they really want to talk to you. And even by talking to them, they, they understand at least, you know, they are getting their voice heard by the people who can make the decision of what to do next. And so I know even if you don't say yes to them at the end of the day, the customer wants the opportunity to explain and sort of, you know, have their moment to the voice their concerns or their ideas with you. And even if you're just sitting down, if you don't necessarily say yes, um, providing that, that time of, you know, <clears throat> you know, and providing that time and discussing that, you know, product vision, I think is really a, uh, a key step in making sure that they feel that they're a valued member of a valued stakeholder in your decision making, and that will help in turn build that relationship. Um, <clears throat> additionally, I think you know it's important to talk through their issues. A lot, oftentimes, there are many layers of communications, and details get dropped. And it's the classic case of the telephone game, and you really want to understand what their issue is. Um, you can, there's often times that they may not be familiar with other parts of the product or, you know, another feature that might help solve their problem, but you really want to talk to, really want to talk to them about what, find out what the problem is and brainstorm with them workarounds. And you want to figure out if this is a unique request, why are other customers, you know, not having this issue uh, and ways that they're solving this problem. And then I think it's also important to understand the customer's internal stakeholders because uh, a lot of times when these escalations come, you know, to you as the product manager, you know, it's definitely an interesting dynamic in the in the B two B environment. Oftentimes, it can be just one individual within a large company that can be causing this escalation to occur, and and you know that that might not be something that's commonly held within your customers, but there's this one individual that happens to be at a large in, a large company, so that so it gives their voice an outsized impact compared to the rest of the users. And so really understanding, and oftentimes that might not even be the direct point of contact that your account team or that, you know, that works with, uh, you know, your customers. So for example, if you are interacting with the IT administrator within an organization, then maybe it's not even the IT administrator's concern, but maybe it's their legal team's concern. And maybe the next step is to have, you know, the customer's legal team and your internal legal team have a conversation about, you know, how a particular legal risk is handled and how they view this legal risk. And you might not even make need to make changes to the product. So I think that's, you know, part of this process is 
brainstorming with them, understanding, you know, where, you know, the real problem is and brainstorming of non-product ways that you can solve this problem. Because I think, you know, if there, if this is a problem that only one customers have, it's, it's typically unusual. So, you know, maybe there are, there are ways that you can handle this without building it into the product, which is the sort of heavy handiest way, heavy handiest <laughs> most heavy handed way that you could address this issue. So the next is to showcase your vision. Um, and I think this is really one of the most you know, important steps is putting your roadmap to work. Um, if you do have a well-constructed roadmap, you should have talked to a lot of customers and really understand what their biggest pain points are. So if you can say like, hey, we understand your concern, uh, I'm not going to be able to get to it now because I'm working on all these other great things. Hopefully that ignites excitement and, you know, and gives you another champion for your roadmap. Uh, hopefully, you know, if your roadmap is constructed, um, you know, well, ho hopefully the, the customer really understands the pain points that you're addressing and gets really excited about having those problems solved and these, or, you know, those opportunities chased where you know, they, they really see your vision and see how their request might be taken away from resources from that. And even they are hopefully bought in and a stakeholder in, um, in developing the roadmap that you, know, you think is most imp impactful. Um, and I think another important thing here when you talk about developing that relationship with the customer, especially with that buying persona, it's really important in a B2B SaaS environment because... Um, when these large enterprise customers buy SaaS products, it's typically not a very, you know, the switching costs are relatively low compared to historical on-prem solutions, but they're definitely non-trivial switching costs. So when they're picking a vendor, uh, large enterprise customers often picking a vendor for many years, um, you know, they have a, a pretty large deployment cycle. It's not easy to get users to switch from one business tool to another business tool. So they really, and they're migrating data often as part of this. So um, it, it really is an investment on their part. So not only do they want to understand and feel like they're investing in the best product today, but they want to, you know, make sure that you're having, you know, continued investment and that your product continues to be the best. So, you know, part of, how you communicate that is through your roadmap. And so hopefully they understand that they're, you know, invested in a partner that is continuing to build the product and continue to give a best in class experience. Um, so I think all this to say that, you know, often when you get these escalations, uh, if you just flat out say, no, I'm not going to do that. It really lands wrong with the customer because it feels like to the customer that you're just not, you're not doing that and they don't really necessarily know what you're working on. They might think you have a good roadmap, but unless that's explicitly communicated to them, they don't know why you can't work on their requests when they're, you know, they're a large enterprise customer. They have a very, you know, they think they have a important say in your organization. And if you just get a flat out, no, it just feels like, um, you know, nothing is happening in some ways. So, um, being able to have that FaceTime and uh, share with them the vision gives it um, <clears throat> gives them you know the opportunity to see what those resources are going to and give them hopefully some excitement about you know what what is to come. Okay, and the third and final one um, point here is that really understanding that context is important and. <clears throat> I think this is sort of along the lines of you have to be, uh, you know, as a product manager, you you have to be a little bit scrappy. And it's not always the textbook way to do product management is not what happens in practice. Uh, there's a lot of business implications and relationship implications within these large B2B contexts that, um, you know, really have to be accounted for. And, and also this is what I'd like to give you permission to say like, yeah, it's okay in order to prioritize a feature to maintain a, relationship with a very important company that is a big logo for your organization. So, you know, I think there are some <clears throat> things that might not show up in, you know, a typical product management lecture or product management, you know, quote unquote book. Um, but, uh, you know, it's really important to be scrappy and to understand that, you know, doing this for a customer, you know, for example, if you are 
a growing company and you need to get a and you you know really want to get a big name logo to establish yourself and establish credibility um you know it may be that this feature is just for one very specific customer but gaining that big name logo will gain credibility and the impact from that credibility gain uh will be much more than any feature that you could launch with the same amount of resources so um, having that understanding, having an understanding of where that relationship is with the customer. If they're, you know, maybe a new customer who's on a legacy provider um, or, you know, incumbent that is one of your main competitors, then maybe it makes sense. They might need a little bit more to switch them over. Um, or if you're a small company and trying to get these, you know, large logos that give you credibility, then it makes a lot more sense in order to do these one-off requests. Um, so, <laughs> All that, I mean, I think something that's very helpful here is often data. Uh, so if you have a couple of different options, you can understand and try and make some predictions about how much incremental revenue a new feature will get you vice uh, this new large customer. And you can do a little bit more direct comparison. So definitely in this case, data is your friend. If you have a large feature that you think is impactful, having some data of the impact that you project that to be, whether it's percentage of usage increase or a market that is unlocked. And you can do a little bit more direct comparison about compared to what you think uh, the, the doing this specific request for a customer would be. All right. So that uh, ends my presentation here. Uh, I appreciate you spending you know this time with me today and um, feel free to reach out, reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks.